Good evening and welcome to Match of the Day, when, as last week, we're showing one first and one second division game. Later, you'll see an end-to-end -end thrilling contest between Norwich and Newcastle, but our first game between Liverpool and Aston Villa was, as you might expect, competitive, tense, and I could almost say breathtaking. And for the second week running, it was the goalkeepers who stole the show. This is Bremner. There's Brobola. Kennedy again. McDermott! Oh! Tonight's main headline concerns the mystery of Nottingham Forest John Robertson. Why did he miss today's game at Stoke? No mystery, though, why a former Forest player, Gary Birtles, is celebrating tonight. So it's straight to Anfield for our first visit this season. The crowd of 37,474 was somewhat down by Liverpool standards, but if only they'd known the excitement that Liverpool and Aston Villa were going to produce, the house would surely have been full. Your commentator was John Motson. How do you replace an institution? That's been the question facing 23-year-old Bruce Grobelaar since he took over in the Liverpool goal from Ray Clements. But he's possibly under less pressure at the moment than a far more established Liverpool player. Because Kenny Dalglish scored in the European Cup in midweek, but hasn't scored a league goal since last November when he got two against the team he faces today, Aston Villa. With Mark Lawrenson suspended, Terry McDermott returns at number 10 after being dropped for the match in Finland. The substitute is the Irish midfield player Ronnie Whelan, while recent signing Craig Johnston plays in the reserves today, along with David Fairclough, who starts his comeback after injury. And Aston Villa's Gary Shaw was also due to play in that same Central League match today at Villa Park, and in his absence, number 8 Terry Donovan keeps the first team position. At number five, Ken McNaught is back after injury to replace Brendan Ormsby, while at number three, Colin Gibson passed a late fitness test. Referee this afternoon, George Tyson from Sunderland. So it's the league champions in white against the European champions in red. Aston Villa attacking the pop end in the first half. Cool afternoon after early sunshine, that's Ray Kennedy. David Johnson up with Alan Evans and the linesman flag for a foul. <laughs> Evans and Johnson again. Here comes Ray Kennedy. Mortimer. Now Phil Neal. And Tony Morley. Sammy Lee. McDermott. Soonis. Alan Kennedy. McDermott's made his run forward. Here's Soonis. Shot struck Mortimer, here's Neil. Beautifully struck by Phil Neal. Power and accuracy, but Jimmy Rimmer saw it all the way. Tony Morley for Villa. That's good running by Mortimer from the midfield, a good header out by Hansen. And here's Douglas. With to Gibson. This is good pace again by Colin Gibson. Donovan is in the centre. And that came via Phil Thompson. And it's a corner. The deflection by the Liverpool captain, I think, slightly threw Grobelaar there. Aston Villa have sent Alan Evans and Ken McNaught forward for the corner. Oh, and that's a Peter With giving them problems. And the defender stretching there to beat him. I was glad to see Grobola picking up the header. Aston Villa have got some dangerous customers when the ball is crossed like that. Villa have only won here once on their last 13 visits. But they've started in fairly promising mood let's see what Liverpool can do coming out of defence with Sammy Lee Dalglish on the far side Terry McDermott back to mark him there was Morley but it's McDermott here Soonis and Johnson are in the centre McNaught's header out here's Dalglish that's played for Neil Dalglish goes for the return it's going to come to Sammy Lee here's Dalglish well, 
The applause goes round the ground for Jimmy Rimmer. But the danger is not over yet, even though Grobelar himself appreciated the save at the other end. Alan Kennedy. Kenny Swain sliding in, and the referee says goal kick. Much to the disappointment of Alan Kennedy, but uh, what about that save there? Because one of the arts of goalkeeping is getting in the right place before the shot comes, and when Sammy Lee blasted that, Jimmy Rimmer stood where he was, took the full power of it, and beat it back out again. The sort of save you often see Rimmer make, and so often is taken for granted. Dalgleish, Sunes to Alan, oh a great run by McDermott on the right and Alan Kennedy saw him, Jimmy Rimmer also saw him but that was a splendid piece of football, there's hardly time to admire it, here's Lee Dalgleish, McDermott onside and it's Johnson with the header Well, Alan Kennedy takes full marks for vision because when he got the ball there, he saw what was happening many yards away on the far side of the field from him, Terry McDermott's familiar run, and how well Kennedy picked McDermott out. Hansen. Liverpool are clipping the ball about neatly in midfield. Can they finish it? Sunes. Lee, Sunes! Again, fine combination play by the European champions. And Graham Sunes finishing with a shot as he was challenged. This is Ken McNaught. was on by Ray Kennedy and here's Johnson and that's for Dalgleish behind him is Sammy Lee and McNaught concedes the corner stops Alan Kennedy well I think if you talk about goalkeepers to people in the game up and down the country they'll probably tell you that Jimmy Rimmer's consistency is not reflected in the single England cap that he's won he served all his clubs well Manchester United Arsenal and Aston Villa and you very rarely see him have a bad game well, Ron Saunders, the manager of the year, has produced in Aston Villa a championship team who've now got enough belief in themselves to go on the attack away from home. And the way they started, in a sense, brought the best out of Liverpool. Oh, Sammy Lee. And again, Rimmer's in the right place. He made it look so easy, that save. But Lee knows that the goalkeeper was well positioned. McDermott started another run, he's causing Cowan a lot of problems is McDermott, Cowan has intercepted that because it wasn't the best of balls from Sunes, but there's a little tussle going on, let's watch Morley first, latching onto the ball from Mortimer, and Morley's in and now Grobelar comes to make a fine stop. Offside flag up against David Johnson, and Aston Villa there had perhaps a cleaner chance than any of Liverpool's because Tony Morley was in behind the defence and he was through on the goalkeeper and Grobelar came in Clement style and made the block. 
Carl Swain coming forward on this right-hand side now. He's giving Liverpool a bit to think about down here. Two in the centre again. With is on the far post, threatening. Grobelar punches it out. And here's Gibson. Morley. Mortimer. Morley. And a good spell, this, for Aston Villa. Bremner. Alan Kennedy. Oh. oh, and Dalgleish lashed out at Alan Evans there. Most unlike Kenny Dalgleish to react as fiercely as that, Alan Evans is going to get booked for the initial challenge. Now, that's... There's an example of where Dalgleish turns so fast, Evans comes clattering in with the challenge, which is made to look very bad. Evans is acknowledging that it was a bad foul. He's getting booked. But Dalgleish was so furious that just for a moment there, he lost his temper. So, Alan Hansen on the ball. Ray Kennedy. Douglas. Good effort. And Rimmer called upon again by Kenny Douglas. The referee wants a word because Des Bremner appears to have spoken out of turn. Dennis Mortimer, the captain, is trying to intercede here, but it's Bremner who's in trouble. And the second Villa name goes into the notebook of referee George Tyson. Now, will their confidence and their concentration be rattled by those two bookings when Liverpool take this corner? Here's Sunis. Good ball, McDermott. Neil. Douglas. Here's McDermott. Oh, it hit the top of the crossbar. Well, he's had a fine first half, McDermott. And as he accelerated on the right there, got behind the defender to get a cross in, the ball just skimmed the bar. And Liverpool in the first half will look back and think how many might have been they've experienced in that penalty area. Here's Ray Kennedy. Sunes. Kennedy again. McDermott! Oh! Well, you can't complain about the number of strikes on goal Liverpool have had, but the Villa fans will once again owe an awful lot of appreciation, as will their players, to Jimmy Rimmer. Well, Liverpool are still having problems scoring goals, but there's been no lack of application about their play in the first half. Only a brick wall called Jimmy Rimmer standing between them and the back of the net he leaves and net and Jimmy Rimmer injured by the initial impact when he came to meet Douglas who'd beaten the offside trap well Kenny Douglas must be wondering when the ball is going to go in in a league match for him he was through there the flag stayed down Rimmer came to meet him they collided the ball ran free Dalgleish went to put it in the net and Alan Evans came along to prevent that happening. It's going to come to Sunis. Evans is there again, so is Phil Thompson, so is Ray Kennedy! And the block by McNaughton Swain combined sends the ball out for another corner. Away this time by Des Bremner. Soon as picking up all the loose balls now, it seems. That's his shot. And they both went in for the rebound, but Rimmer held it. And 
Mortimer just sizing up the options. Finds Gibson with Mortimer. Halfway through the second half, Alan Hansen for Liverpool. Three up with him. Johnson to his right, number nine. Rimmers there again. McDermott off the line. Cowan's away. And it was Alan Evans again. Well, that's extraordinary. Lee. Ray Kennedy. Oh, Remner this time with the block. Well, really, you wonder what Liverpool have got to do to get the ball in. Donovan. Rimmer came there to meet Johnson. That was a good save. It ran free to McDermott. And Alan Evans kicked it off the line. Now Johnson. There are ten minutes to go. Dalgleish to McDermott. Now Sunis. Wide of him. Johnson spreading away. This is McDermott. Oh, yes, it's going in this time. Oh, it's not. It's hit the post. <laughs> Lee, McDermott again, the ground buzzing, and McDermott cursing his luck, Bremner for Aston Villa, well Jimmy River was beaten for once, soon as played a terrific ball through to McDermott, he got the left foot round the ball, past the goalkeeper, drifting across the face of the goal, and back off that left hand post. Oh, and a little bit of a tussle, Alan Evans and Ray Kennedy. Ray Kennedy retaliating on Alan Evans there, and the referee may even send him off. He has. Ray Kennedy lashed out. He caught Alan Evans in the face. The Liverpool players are protesting, but Ray Kennedy has been sent off for violent conduct. Very, very rarely do Liverpool ever have a player sent off. It's never happened in Europe. Only occasionally in league matches. But Ray Kennedy expelled by referee George Tyson for striking an opponent. Liverpool are down to ten men. The cop is buzzing with the last two incidents. But they have a free kick for the initial foul. Neil blocked by Donovan. Well, if the referee was satisfied that Kennedy struck a blow, and I think he was, then he had no option but to send him off because that is violent conduct in the laws of the game, even though Liverpool will claim he was provoked. Here's Morley. Mortimer to Swain. Well, the Liverpool supporters unhappy with the sending off. And here's Graham soon as this. A great run by McDermott and by Dalgleish. And here's McDermott. Oh! They've done all they possibly could. McDermott and Dalgleish and the other Liverpool attackers. Bob Paisley reflecting the anxiety of the afternoon as he talks to Joe Fagan. Remner now. And Villa win a corner. And they've sent Evans and McNaught forward, sensing that even at this late stage, they themselves could snatch two extra points Mortimer to take Robillard comes confidently looks up sees that Dalgleish is the only man forward and finds him Mortimer though for Villa
offside. Johnson, Dermot, and the referee may feel there was some pulling on the edge of the box there. David Johnson got tangled up with the defenders. And Liverpool sensing that this will surely be their last chance. Eight of the ten men pushed forward. And all Villa's 11 are pulled back. Oh, it clipped the bar. Drama right to the last. Kenny Dalglish with a little chip, which just came off the top of the crossbar, and referee George Tyson ends the match, which I hope won't be remembered, only for the sending off of Ray Kennedy, because although that happened for his retaliation on Alan, on Alan Evans, the fact remains, this was an excellent advertisement for British football from the league champions and the European champions. Villa will admit that Liverpool had nearly all the game, most of the chances. Jimmy Rimmer thwarted them many times, so did the post, so did some gallant Villa defenders. And in the end, perhaps one point is not what Liverpool feel they deserve, but it's all they got. Liverpool nil, Aston Villa nil. Well, I don't think anyone will begrudge Jimmy Rimmer the award of Man of the Match. And first, perhaps, we should pay tribute to him with the aid of our camera behind the goal and see the best of his many saves in slow motion. The first was a save of the feet more than of the hands, although the hands look stylish finally. McDermott's header, you can see the agility that he uses. Two or three neat steps and then stretches back to clutch the ball just before it goes over the line. The second, different altogether. And the beauty of this save was that Gordon Cowans, who you see running back there in direct line with the keeper and Sammy Lee's shot, takes his chest out at the last moment and gives him virtually no time in which to react. But react he did and thrust the ball away. Well, it would be easy to say that uh, were it not for that performance from Jimmy Rimmer, Liverpool would have won. But that ignores the general problem they're having in scoring. And you wouldn't think that players of their stature would lack confidence. But it happens to the very best, not so much when they're in possession, but in expecting the 50-50 ball to break for them. At their best, they pour men into attack in numbers, but on one occasion, I noticed a difference. From this uh, Phil Neal cross, you'll see as the ball's headed out, seems on the floor for an interminable time. No Liverpool red shirt in there to finish the job, and Mortimer finally gets in there first. Well, apart from just uh, confidence in an attacking sense, they seem to be relying over much on Terry McDermott's powerful surges forward. And my belief is that for some time now, they've been missing a Steve Highway type, one against one specialist, to find another way to unlock opposing defences as a variation from their superb spontaneous passing rhythm. And this is the sort of move in which, as the ball's cleared out from a corner, in which they spread the play out and use the width of the pitch so well. Beautiful strike, that. Goes straight out to Kenny Dalglish on the line. And Kenny does his best. He realises with that space looming between the defender approaching him and the byline, that's where he should go. But uh, neither he nor any of his really current colleagues seem to have that acceleration and surge, maybe that Steve Highway did, and I think that's uh, something that Bob Paisley might be paying some attention to. Well, in case Liverpool's uh, knowledgeable fans still feel that it was just bad luck today, and I must say I have some sympathy with that point of view, I'll leave the last word on that fine game to Jimmy Rimmer, and it's about posts and crossbars. Well, they always say it's the post of the bar, but that's what they're there for, isn't it? If it beats me, it's good judgment, it gets the post of the bar, you know, I mean, people say this, it's at the bar, but we, we do these things, I mean, Bruce knows that if it's the post of the bar, it's, it's beat us, but it hasn't beat, it's not gone in the net, has it? You know, and this is what it's all about. Well, if you think Jimmy is joking, I can assure you that all goalkeepers consider the woodwork very much part of their defensive armoury, and they train and practice with that in mind.
Anyway, now to Carrow Road to see how Norwich City are coping with second division football after being relegated in May. There are visitors today, that famous club from the northeast in Newcastle United. Your commentator, Alan Parry. Newcastle fans bred on the feats of stars like Jackie Milburn and Malcolm McDonald expect great things from the man wearing number nine on those famous black and white stripes. The latest player to fill the role is Imri Varadi, who ironically might have been playing against them today. Norwich tried to sign Varadi last month, but he chose St James's Park instead and lines up today in an unchanged Newcastle side. Varadi has yet to score since his move from Everton, and in fact the only Newcastle player who's found the net this season is John Truick, who scored last week's winner against Cambridge. Finding a goal scorer has also been a problem for the home team Norwich. Justin Fashionu has gone, his replacement Keith Burchin is suspended, and Joe Royal is injured. It's meant a reshuffle with the former Ipswich winger Clive Woods coming in, and the centre-forward spot, though he wears number 11, goes to Ross Jack, who, like Newcastle's Varadi, is a former Everton player. Today's referee, Clive White of Harrow, for my money, one of the best in the league. And so it's Norwich who kick off, attacking from left to right. Newcastle in the striped shirts and hoping for better luck in front of our cameras than last season when they let in 14 goals in three appearances. Chris Woods aiming for Barham. Downs, this is Woods. Downs loves to go down that left wing. And usually a good crosser of the ball, though not that time really. Berardi beaten by Walford. There's Clyde Woods again. And the referee giving the free kick Norwich's way. Walker the offender. This is Padden. Good accurate cross for Shepherd. Away in the end by Walton, Maguire, breakdowns again, Newcastle moving forward, trying to play the offside trap. Oh, that was very nearly one of the most spectacular own goals that you uh, would have seen for a long time, and it really would have been embarrassing for Ian Davis as a former Norwich player, had his goalkeeper not tipped that one over. Not quite sure what he was thinking of then, Davis. And it turned Norwich a corner. Good header away by Barton. Padden finding Woods again. Padden. And a good firm tackle by Brownlee. Barham. Three men in the middle, but what a good tackle by Brownlee. Norwich still in with Shepard. And a fine save again by Kevin Carr. Well, that's twice in the space of a minute that Kevin Carr has had to react quickly. A fine shot on the turn. It seemed to be speeding for the bottom corner. The worst place as far as the goalkeeper was concerned. But Carr got to it. Another corner. Bit flat that kick and it enabled Downs to reach it first. He's gone down the line. It's a sensible position, but Walford is not giving him any space. Nightingale and uh, Holiday came in strongly then, but the referee decided that the Norwich player had his foot too high. And David Barton, the centre half. He's gone forward into the edge of the Norwich box for Brownlee's free kick. Aimed at Barton, and he found it too. Oh, and there was almost fatal indecision, and there is fatal indecision, which has given Newcastle a goal they could hardly have expected. Chris Wood is scoring, but Chris Woods was the man who was really at fault. 
as the free kick came in, Barton won it in the air, but the spinning ball didn't really seem to be presenting Woods with any problems. He fumbled, Norwich didn't have adequate cover, and Waddle on the near post scores for Newcastle, their first goal away from home, would you believe it, for eight months. So, a setback for Norwich, who'd started this game so brightly, but really they only have themselves to blame for an error like that. Brownlee. Poor Chris Woods, who had hardly been called into the action in the 12 minutes preceding that goal, finding that his first important touch was an error. Nightingale's clearance, and Shepard in the middle here, if Barham can find him. That's positive attacking, and that's great goalkeeping. Well, Barham really went straight for the heart of the Newcastle defence. The cross perhaps was a little bit too close to the goal, but Kevin Carr, superb handling and anticipation. Walford's header away, Martin turning it back. In goes Wharton, and reaches it too, that could be a problem. But Downs made sure it wasn't. Martin again. And Truick surely held off Graham Patton, the Norwich skipper. Well, not many of them are here, but they're enjoying this, these Newcastle fans. Well, they're side under pressure again here from Barham. Fine tackle by Wharton. Haradi laying it back to him, but he really made that uh, difficult for Wharton. Ross Jack for Norwich. Barham, three men in the penalty area. Perhaps Nightingale can spot them. That was Holiday's header away. Adam with another opportunity for this long throw. Came off Halliday's head, and that's a corner. Barham on the near post, Ross Jack just behind him, and Norwich pushed both their tall centre-backs forward as well for these corners. Taken by Woods. It was dangerous to the near post. Just the position that uh, defenders don't like. Another good corner, and it came off the head of Dave Watson, and that's the equaliser for Norwich City. 19 minutes gone, and another fine corner floated in by Clyde Woods from the left. Catches the Newcastle defence with a problem. Steve Walford, Dave Watson, the two target men. In the end, it was the former Liverpool player, Watson, with that lovely flick header. The ball nestling in the corner of the net. And even Kevin Carr, who started so well for Newcastle, couldn't reach it. Norwich City won, Newcastle won then. And a lively opening to this second division match. Again, Waddle and Berardi, the men in the middle. But he can't keep the ball on the pitch. That's dangerous, and Wharton intercepts. And once again, it was Watson having to make up for an error by a teammate. Waddle running intelligently into space. Davis wanting to get short on the edge of the box. But a good cross coming in towards Berardi. And really then any one of three players might have got a touch. Truick in the end turns it back for Brownlee. And the danger hasn't gone for Norwich, but it has now. Well, a fine cross that was coming in uh, from the left by young Chris Waddle. And clean across the face of that Norwich goal. Any one of three Newcastle players might have got the final touch. And Norwich living very dangerously. Well, it went over Halliday's head to Jack. Shepard finding Woods. Shepard and Jack still in the middle. But Brownlee 
is playing Clive Woods extremely well. In the meantime, inside the penalty area, David Barton has gone down and will require treatment before the game can continue. Steve Carney, the Newcastle sub, but usually a fullback that can play central defender, and was chosen as sub precisely because Barton's ankle was injured and he may now have to be used rather earlier than Newcastle would have wished. So Arthur Cox in the tracksuit, the Newcastle manager, pleased with his side start, but uh, things have gone rather worse since. The game underway again, here's Maguire, looking for Shepard, Barton's header, and I really think he's in trouble with that. Uh, well, he was nearly in a great deal of trouble then, as Barham finally hit that shot wide, the ball came over and really it all came about simply because David Barton is struggling with that ankle injury he's down on the ground again but I think he's saying to Tommy Kavanagh that he can't carry on and it looks as though Newcastle will rearrange by playing Brownlee in the middle though Carney can play there as well they're just having a word those two and Carney's gone to the central defensive position Walker's head out, this could be dangerous, Berardi getting in, and Chris Woods, this time, was decisive and needed to be. Ken Brown, the Norwich City manager, appointed almost a year ago when John Bond left, was talking to the Norwich chairman, Sir Arthur South. Here's Downs for Norwich, and that the final action of the first half, in which the good football came only sporadically, Chris Waddle giving the lead to Newcastle United following the mistake by the Norwich goalkeeper, Chris Woods. But seven minutes later, number six, Dave Watson, with a flick header from a corner, equalising. And Newcastle, considering they lost their first-choice centre-half, David Barton, can be well pleased with their efforts in that first half, thanks mainly to Kevin Carr, their goalkeeper, who had a fine match. Half-time score, Norwich City won, Newcastle United won. So Newcastle get the second half underway in this, their fourth successive season in the second division following relegation. Norwich went down last season, of course, and both clubs know that financially an early return is absolutely essential. Norwich have taken seven points so far, Newcastle only three, having played a game fewer. That was Davis's header. Nightingale, here's Watson, Shepard forward, and the tackle by Halliday was a foul. Nightingale, and he's got plenty of choices here, decides to go for Barham, that's not a bad cross either, Halliday's header still providing danger, Nightingale with the intelligent chip, deserved applause for the fullback. The cross came in, Carr could only get a fist to it, couldn't hold it, and as it dropped for Mark Nightingale, he realised the keeper was still off his line, and the chip, though not accurate enough, was an intelligent effort. Nightingale. Takes the free kick himself, and waits for some movement on the edge of that Newcastle penalty area. And Halliday with the clearance. It's Barham. Nightingale again. Carney's header, or was it a header? Did he use his hands? He used his hand, says referee Clive White. And the substitute, Steve Carney, has conceded a penalty. As the cross was floated in from the right, there was a suspicion when he first went up for the ball that he'd used his hand. I think some of the players thought he'd headed it away, but the referee spotted the use of a hand by Carney, and that's a penalty kick to Norwich. Nick Maguire with a fine opportunity then to give the home side the lead. Charmed life and a marvellous game as well.
as well. Maguire seemed to have placed the penalty in exactly the right spot, but it wasn't quite accurate enough, and Newcastle survived a penalty that one or two of their players are still arguing shouldn't have been given. And three Newcastle men forward, here's Truick. Has he taken it too far? Almost not, but here's Berardi again, and Patton in the way when the stop came in. Well, Truick seemed to have taken it too far then. It came back off the woodwork, and Berardi's second attempt for Newcastle was blocked by Patton. Here's Wobble. What a lively start to this second half. Al uh, Carney, rather. Maguire going up, but Martin winning it. Waddle, oh, it took a deflection. Fine tackle by Nightingale. Maguire turning it forward. Shepard in the chase with Davis and winning the throw in. There's Nightingale. Woods. Nobody in support at the moment. Tried to find Jack on the far post. Carr spotting the danger. And a good fist away for Verardi. And this time Waddle is onside. Can he keep his composure here? Well, he kept it, but the final shot wasn't accurate enough. For the umpteenth time, Norwich taking a risk. It was Carr at the other end who set up that attack with the clearance. Waddle was this time in an onside position. Went on well, but Chris Woods narrowing the angle, and it was just too narrow in the end as Waddle pulled his shot wide. Came off the head of Halliday. Jack heading it further on, and Brownlee might well have let Maguire in here. Good goalkeeping again, but Clive Woods. Oh, how did he miss that? Ross Jack will not want to see this again. It looked all on then. Carr made a magnificent save at the feet of the forward in the first place, but as Clive Woods clipped it over, Ross Jack literally had the goal at his mercy and will not be pleased to see that one again in slow motion as it goes over the crossbar. That really was, I'm afraid, a bad miss by the former Everton player. do it well Martin now walk up Martin again the defenders pedaling away Nightingale's clearance interesting break on here for Clive Woods attacking Carney two Norwich players up in support and a corner of Halliday There's marvellous attacking intent by both sides in this game and it's produced a very entertaining match, particularly the second half in which they've both gone forward. Woods with the corner. Oh, problems again for Jack. And somehow or other the keeper has kept it out again and collected a crack on the head for his problems. Ross Jack hooking the ball towards the far post. It looked as though it might creep into the corner. Carr kept it out, and as Shepard came in anticipating a possible rebound, the goalkeeper got a crack on the back of the head. That's Andrew Hart, the Norwich substitute. It's a good corner, flicked on towards Watson, away by Halliday, and Downs completely missing it. And now a real cavalry charge, led by Brownlee. Walker on his right, Berardi on his left. Here's Walker. Well, 
he had plenty of options, didn't he? And he chose the wrong one. And the change being made by Norwich City, and this young man, Andrew Hart, comes on to his first team debut. The nephew of the Norwich youth team coach, Dave Stringer, a midfield player, and he's come on in place of fullback Mark Nightingale, and that's the sign of attacking intent again in Norwich City. Woods. Jack and Shepherd inside the Newcastle box. And the carbon copy, the final ball, not good enough. Here's Watson. Bullford. this oh that was almost a bad mistake and Norwich do have possession Maguire Jack and Shepard is offside a good quick incisive build up by Norwich but the linesman perfectly placed raised his flag as soon as the ball reached Greg Shepard offside Roddy Walker could be interesting Waddle on the left Walker and Berardi in the centre oh and again Norwich living so dangerously Waddle getting the ball really driving that cross in it seemed to go through so many players legs and Norwich got it away but here's Waddle again and Woods just stretching high enough Ten minutes to go. 1-1, one, one, Clive Woods for Norwich. Oh, so easily round Brownlee. Downs in support. Jack! What a superb goal by Ross Jack. And now he won't feel so bad about that terrible miss earlier in the game. Woods, so vital in the build-up. Greg Downs, too, going so effectively down that left-hand side for Norwich. The cross was dangerous, but there really didn't seem an opening on, and Ross Jack, flick header, produced a superb goal. Norwich City, two, Newcastle, one. And now Newcastle, who really haven't stopped coming forward in this game, in all fairness to them, must commit even more men from the back. Maguire for Norwich. And he'll be very grateful that Jack got that one too. And here's Jack again. Shepard in the middle, offside. Greg Shepard showing his disappointment. But again, the red flag raised on that far side by Mr Ashworth. Instantly, Shepard was offside. Guys kicked, searching out Maradi. Watson held his ground well. Davis, Truick, on for Martin, and Waddle wide on the left again. Two men in the Norwich box in black and white strike, but Waddle tries his own effort, and that really was a good shot by the young man who scored the Newcastle goal in the first half. There were two men, Truick and Verardi, in the penalty area, but he saw the gap, went for it, and hit that fine shot only just over. Martin, Davis, Brownlee will have to carry the ball forward, but uh, tries to pick out and finds Wharton, who finds Verardi in turn. Now Truick, fine headed away by Watson. There's Waddle again, four Newcastle men in the penalty area, came for Walker. But again, denied by the Norwich defence, this time Walford. Waddle. Martin Short in support if he needs him. He doesn't. Good cross. Berardi setting it up. Brownlee shot! Well, John Brownlee 
has never scored for Newcastle in his three seasons with the club, and that would have been an opportune moment to get off the mark. The ball just knocked back short for him by Berardi. Brownlee with that swinging half volley just wide. Ken Brown, the Norwich City manager, celebrates a fine win for his side. Ross Jack with that flick header, giving him a goal in the second half. He remember for another reason too. He made a glaring miss earlier, but more than made up for it with what proved to be the winning goal. But all credit to Newcastle, whether it was the three-point target or not, they never stopped attacking, they never stopped looking for a winner, and can regard themselves as slightly unlucky to lose. The final scoreline at Carroll Road, Norwich City 2, Newcastle United 1. Well, that match had the thrills and the goals, and I, for one, wouldn't complain about the entertainment value there. And it just occurred to Bob and myself, watching those two matches this afternoon, with honours even in both going into the last 20 minutes, all four teams were committed to non-stop attack, which kept us and the fans on their toes until the last whistle. And if that's what three points for a win does, we thought it must do good. But we were only spectators, and after the match, we consulted the professionals. Well, I must admit, I, it, it did cross my mind to make the substitution to the effect that um, I wanted another person to get forward. And I put young Marky Barham back to fall back to give him orders to come forward there. And it may have had a bearing on it. You can't tell me that there's one person gone home from here today, but um, um, support-wise, other than the die-hard Newcastle ones, as unfortunately we, we haven't won. Now, Every one of Ken's people have gone home because we've taken part in a very, very good match. Well, with just four weeks of the season gone, there's not one club in the league still with a 100% record. The four who had survived until today, Sheffield Wednesday, Newport, Reading and Bournemouth, all failed to win. But the big news tonight concerns the absence of Scottish international winger John Robertson from the Nottingham Forest team that won 2-1 at Stoke. Robertson, who recently asked for a transfer, was due to play, but we understand he was sent home by Forest manager Brian Clough after an incident at the team's hotel where they had stopped for lunch. Forrest then had to hurriedly call up Colin Walsh, who arrived barely half an hour before kickoff. The young reserve winger, in fact, scored Forrest's first goal, and by this time we believe Robertson had returned to Nottingham under his own steam to watch rivals Notts County lose 4-1 to Ipswich. Tonight I spoke to Forrest's assistant manager, Peter Taylor, who said, it is purely an internal club matter which I am not prepared to discuss. But whatever the future holds for John Robertson, Forrest have started well, moving up six places with today's victory. West Ham, who drew at West Bromwich, still lead Division 1, but now only on goal difference from championship favourites Ipswich. Alan Brazil scored twice in their win at Notts County, and Steve Moran, who got two goals in Europe in midweek, added another as Southampton beat Middlesbrough 2-0 to go third, a point behind the leaders. Swansea dropped from second to fourth after being beaten by the year's most eagerly awaited goal, from Manchester United's Gary Birtles. The last time he scored in the league was for Nottingham Forest exactly a year ago. And after his goal had given United their first win of the season, Gary said, I thought it was going to hit the post, but it went in and the crowd went mad for me. The fans have never got on my back in those 30 league games without a goal, and I greatly appreciate their patience. United are now one of seven clubs on five points, and they include four of the teams who finished in the top five last season. But spare a thought for Everton tonight. They may have to play defender Mick Lyons in goal against Notts County on Tuesday because first choice Jim Arnold and reserve Neville Southall are both injured. Despite losing their 100% record in the home draw with Derby, Sheffield Wednesday stay top of Division 2, a point clear of Luton, the team they beat last week. In the third division, two more 100% records went, with Newport and Reading losing to the two Bristol clubs, City and Rovers. So the new leaders are Swindon, following their 2-1 win at Exeter. And in Division 4, Bournemouth also failed to take three points for the first time this season, when they drew one all at Halifax, but they still lead the table by a point. Finally, pools, and with seven score draws and ten no-score draws, it could be a very good payout. Claim by Telegram for 22 and a half and 23 points, and the score draw numbers are 2, 20, 31, 35, 38, 54, and 55. 
So once again, no complaints about tonight's action from this side of the camera, and I trust you enjoyed it too. Thank goodness there was no noisy fire alarm this week to disturb the peace of the program, because, like you, I'm sure we prefer our excitement and fireworks to happen on the field. Good night to you. Good effort, and Rimmer called upon again. Sunes. Kennedy again. McDermott! Oh!